All right, so I'm going to run you guys through uh, this Night Owl security system. I've already had uh, their 720p system for a little while, so I've got a hang of how it all works. But I felt like I needed a little more resolution, so let's take a look at the 1080p one. Um, this one's basically the same exact thing as the 720, uh, except it has eight channels instead of uh, four. And it obviously has 1080p cameras, and it has the capability of recording 1080p. You need to look on their stuff and see, because some of them are like 1080L for light, and it's not 1080p. It's like, I don't know, the resolution's really weird. So make sure you get the 1080p version. This is the regular DVR. It's not the um, the network uh, recorder. It's just the regular digital recorder. So you can run your regular BNC and your power and all that stuff. No Ethernet jacks or uh, power over Ethernet, stuff like that. So anyway, let's pop it open, take a look. Okay, so inside you'll find two boxes. One will be the DVR, and the other one will be the cameras. So here we are inside the DVR box. You get your main DVR unit with all your stuff. You get a remote control, you get a mouse, you get a power cord, you get an Ethernet cable, you get an HDMI cable. Uh, you get some software that you can install on your computer. Free batteries. Batteries include and some customer support, which uh, their stuff is crap. I'd order a camera. I, tr I tried to get a replacement camera through them at the 720p because one of them was dead after the first two minutes and I couldn't get through <laughs> not easily. And uh, even with the new system, uh, there's fog, there's moisture in one of the lenses, so in the morning it always fogs up. So that's a little annoying. All the business is on the back here. So you get your power in. You have uh, one power out for some device. You got you got your Ethernet. You got two USB, a VGA, and HDMI to see video. You got your eight channels in. You got your four uh, audio in and one audio out. So that's cool. Okay, so here's the camera box. I believe this is 60 foot of cable. So you have your video and your power. So make sure you check uh, which end goes where. One says to DVR, one says to camera. So make sure you don't run them backwards. It's only for the power adapters, really. So then you get a power splitter. So these all plug into those wires, and this part goes into your power brick. So you get a power brick for the wall, and then you get your four cameras. Inside, you'll just have um, you know your camera wrapped up and uh, mounting hardware. So these ones are white. These are the 1080p versions. They just come with a small pigtail. So, they got a little sun cover and they kinda help, but not for extreme angles. I wish it was a little longer. But it's nice, rugged, and a metal, so not bad. Okay, cool. And you get your dinky little mounting hardware. I didn't try using the, uh, the anchors, but the screws did okay for just going through wood. Alright. Uh, the first thing that I like doing is testing them all out. So we're going to hook this all up and um, just test them and make sure they work because, you know, you don't want to find out your hardware is dead before you hang it all up. First thing I'm noticing on initial hookup is that these cables are a little tight trying to push in. Some of them you got to push pretty hard, but you'll see when it seats and then you can spin this lock on. Okay, so here's what everything looks like when it's all hooked up. So we have our four cameras. Each camera gets their BNC and their power. And then over on the other end, you get power to the splitter, and you get, you know, feed to the, the DVR down here. All the cameras are powered through this one splitter to the smaller guy over here. And the bigger one powers the DVR. We need a mouse, we need an HDMI cable to hook up, and all these guys are rolling. So, if you heard that, that was the, uh, the night vision. And if we go like this, they all turn on. And that's the infrared filter turning on and off. That's what that click noise is, so it picks up the night vision. So if we come up here, since this is the eight channel version, we have eight different channels on the screen. And we get a, uh, a prompt. Uh, we're gonna skip the wizard for now. All the cameras work, so we're pretty much in the, uh, the money. So that's good. So now I guess we can hook them up. I want to see what the difference is between a 1080 and a 720. I'm going to test them on both systems. Okay, I'll have to look and see if I can actually record footage so that you can see what it looks like. But these are the four 720p cameras on the 720p system that I have set up. So you can full scale it and take a look. Now this is in, this is in the daytime. Of, 
Uh. This is about evening. It's just dark enough that the cameras have switched to night vision. In the daytime, they are full color. But, um, the quality's okay. You can't see a ton. So, like, for instance, if we try to zoom in to this over here, it's a little distorted, but uh, there's not a whole lot of detail. And at night, it is literally just, it's terrible. You can't make out really anything. You can see a shape, maybe. So let's see, um, um, this, this camera right here. So this is the one that will switch. So keep an eye on that. And again, see cars drive by. And we'll zoom in. So that's what you can see with 720p on a 720p camera. So I'll see if I can hook up the 1080 in the same location. So this was only a temporary setup, but that's how obvious the 720p camera is over there. It's black. So for lighter buildings, it sticks out pretty well. Bring you around to the side. So there's two cameras here. You see them both? One on the left at the top, one at the right down at the bottom. So, you know, they kind of stick out, but at the same time, since they're black, they sort of blend in, at least on this side. So, compare that to this bright white thing. I don't know. I'll see what I can do. Okay, so there's your two cameras, side by side. They look pretty much identical. Uh, the white one has a one-third inch sensor, and the black one has a quarter inch sensor. Obviously the size difference also has something to do with the megapixels. white one is a 2 megapixel 1080, the black one is a 1 megapixel 720. So, there you go. Those cheeky buggers. So I don't know how they do that, but apparently this won't even, it won't even look at 1080p. So if you plug in a 1080p camera, it won't even do anything. So that's a shame. That means you couldn't get the cheaper DVR, because I really wanted to see the difference. Huh. Well, that's a bummer. I guess I'll have to set up the uh, the other DVR unit then. Okay, so here we are in the 1080p system. Now, uh, just looking at it with my own eyes, there's definitely a lot more definition by far. And you'll notice something else. It's wider. The 720p cameras are a, I believe, a 70 degree field of view. This one has a 100 degree field of view, so you get a lot more in your frame. So, I had blind spots before. Now I think by angling the cameras properly, I can get rid of those blind spots, which is amazing. Alright, so let's just come in here, let's look at the same spot we did before. And there's a lot more detail. I can't read the license plate, but it's also darker. But that is a very decent quality. Let's, let's go over here. I really need to figure out how to record this stuff, but that's that camera. So now let's switch to the 720p and see the difference. Remember the uh, the field of view? There's a car all the way to the right. You can barely see the bumper um, over there. So when we switch the other one, you're not going to see that at all. And now let's switch over to the 720p. That is a big difference. Look at that. The quality on the 720p is just garbage. I look at this and I'm like, oh wow, I can really make everything out. So yeah, you can just, you can instantly see just the signal. The signal itself is a lot cleaner. The 720p wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so damn noisy. But you just, you really can't make anything out. And you go over here and you're like, oh wow, you can see everything. And again, wider field of view as well. That is just, oh my god. Already, I'm very happy with this purchase, so, yeah, if, if, if you have to only buy one system and you actually want to catch people, 1080p for sure, unless you think you can make them out on here. I don't think you can. Let's take a look at this, uh, this detail over here. Nice and fuzzy. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so the zoom kind of uh, changes when you switch video signals 
but I tried to put it back in the same spot. Now, you're kind of fighting a battle here, um, and it would be nice to, uh, to really compare them on the computer, get the raw files, because even though the signal is clearer and you have more, you know, megapixels, since it is wider, things are technically smaller, so zooming in on this, you'd probably still get more detail, but it's just one of them, them things. Not bad. It definitely depends on how you point your infrared on uh, what it thinks needs to be brighter and darker, but again, the smartphone's kind of blowing it out a little bit. But it looks beautiful. I'm really happy with this. Okay, so now that we're all on the same screen, you can much, much better see the quality difference. Brighten this up so you can see the dark spots, but you can just see it just looks so much better compared to here. Take a look at both these together. It's just, it's literally fuzz. <laughs> you can't see a whole lot of detail. It's, it's pretty bad. So yeah, that's much better. So I think I'm gonna go hook up all the, uh, the rest of the cameras. So already here we are. This is the second camera that I went to go put up and this one, the lens is fogging up. It's a really annoying problem that they need to work on because you can't see crap. So I'm going to let it sit out there for a little bit and see if it doesn't clear up, but I don't know. But it just sucks. You can just see it's just, a, just a little bit of fog gets behind that lens and it's over, man. And these don't look very serviceable, so I don't even know how well you'd be able to take them apart and clean them up. But man, does that suck. Well, I decided to plug it into the internet and there was actually an update. Cool. So under the advanced tab, you can detect and see if there's an update and then download it if you want. So let's see if that uh, helps fix any of the weird things. All right, so now we have three 1080p cameras and one 720p camera. Uh, the only thing that I can say about the 720s is that I feel like their brightness is a bit brighter. So I don't know, I feel like that's kind of useful. This is uh, again like evening time. The 1080p's are definitely a lot clearer, and especially at night, you know, they're, they're much better at night, but the 720's, they're... I don't know. They seem a little more lively in the daytime, but maybe that's just me. Okay, so, how quickly does that catch your eye? So, got a white one over there. Got a white one over here. And we got one over here. I feel like this one sticks out pretty well. So, there you go. I wish I could have ran the wire on this one a little bit better. But, uh, oh well. So basically, you just tuck it in, in your siding. Just slide it up in there, and she's hidden. And then you just follow the path of least resistance all around the house. So, there we go. Nice clean install. Alright, so we got one more camera that I'm going to throw into the mix. So it's got a smoked bezel on the front. It still has night vision and a light sensor. So, and that, it's still a 1080p camera, I believe. I'll have to look up the specs. Housing's plastic. It uses a bit of a different mounting design than the uh, metal ones. Just has a little ratcheting system in here to aim it up and down. Just loosen this up and it'll click. And a plastic uh, adjuster for the spinning. So I don't know. It is an entirely plastic housing with built-in little shade. Not nearly as adjustable or robust feeling. But, you know, it'll probably still do fine. So we're going to uh, mount this one up and uh, compare it a little bit. Still connects to the same connectors, power, and uh, coaxial, so that's good. Okay, so here's the camera mounted up. Now, a couple things to notice. First off, the mounting locations for the screws are different. So if you're trying to just replace your old cameras, this one won't fit quite right. 
If you notice, it's not mounted down fully on this side. I just kind of tightened it down until it sat there good. It's not falling off, it's on there. But yeah, if you want to do the job proper, you're gonna to have to re-drill two of your holes. As for adjusting the camera, it's interesting. I mean, there's there's more to it, but you can do it mostly without tools. And I guess technically it might be easier for adjustment, but it's not as fast. So the first part here, this allows you to swivel it up and down. And it's not too bad, you just lock it down once you get it where you need it to be. This one, the bolt isn't very long, so if you try to loosen this up too much, that little uh, back nut is going to fall right out. So just make sure that you keep a good amount of tension. So that'll allow you to go this way, that way. And the last one is to actually rotate the camera barrel so that it's pointing the way that you want it to, so it's actually horizontal. That's set with this little set screw. So you back this screw off and you can rotate it this way, that way. And you just tighten that back down. So I don't know. I mean, it works. It's plastic, but we'll see. Let's go take a look at the picture. Okay, so the camera in the bottom left is the different camera. You can kind of tell it's got a bit uh, different. Uh, the greens definitely look uh, more yellow. And it's weird because it's overexposed and slightly underexposed all at the same time. So if we look at this one, you can see that the sidewalk is pretty well blown out. But the uh, the truck is uh, rather dark and so are the shadows. So it's, it's weird that the contrast isn't all that great. Or the, uh, the contrast ratio maybe? I don't know. But if we come up here, the sidewalk's a little blown out. But you can see more. A little more of the truck, I feel, and just shadows in general. I don't know. I guess we'll see what the uh, night vision looks like. Maybe I'll record some clips of me walking around, see what uh, it looks like. Eh, that'll do. Okay, so real quick, I just want to show you some of the key uh, components of the software and how this thing works. So right here we are in R4, uh, our quad view. And if you double click on an image, you can blow it up to see a bigger view. A single clip brings you uh, a couple different options for that camera. You got color settings, you got zoom, instant playback a manual record and a manual snapshot. So if you want to do a zoom you can come in here and do this. I wish it would stay in proportion to the screen because otherwise you get this really goofy cropping if you don't do it right. But you can zoom in and see stuff. Double click to leave that. Now down here is the main menu so you can see a couple different things. Now if this triggers you see it just switched to manual. Uh, it's in motion recording. The only really useful thing here is either the main menu button or the playback button. So if you go to the main menu, uh, there's a bunch of different things you can play with, but the important things is you can go to uh, alarms for your cameras, which is uh, really useful. It you, you can tell the camera where to record and where not to record, so if, if say, say for instance you always have bushes or something that move over here, you can tell it to ignore that area, so everything in red is what it actually records. So that's useful if you're trying to filter out things that uh, move around a lot that you're not trying to focus on. Uh, on top of that, we have our post recording and stuff like that. But you can you can mess around with stuff, send emails, and full screen, and messages, and all that crap. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you also have the sensitivity uh, on there, which is important to check out. So you can you can change the sensitivity. Um, different setups, recording. So this is like your playback thing. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, our devices. So this is a one terabyte drive. It can hold about a week and a half uh, of full-time recording. You got your setup, users, info, all that crap. And we also have a reboot thing if you wanted to like restart if you ever are worried about issues, I guess. All right, now onto the fun stuff. Actually seeing what you want to look at. So let's say, for instance, you want to take a look at something. Click on the day. And you can click your start time if you want, or you can just click play. So here it is. Here's everything. You can see your four cameras. And down here, uh, I have my camera set to record all the time, so it's the green. And then when it catches events, it shows up in yellow. So that's a uh, motion detected. So you got to fine tune this so that you only get you know events you care about. So that's the tricky part. 
So you can scroll through and see your motion. Something I find that's interesting is uh, spider webs and just bugs in general are very attracted to the infrared light. So it sets off the motion detector constantly. It's pretty obnoxious. So it's something to be aware of when you uh, you post it. So hey, look, there's some motion. Let's see who that wily bastard is. So this is why it's useful to have your uh, motion detection. So you can double click and zoom in and see what's going on. And for farther zooming, you can also zoom even closer. Get a better better look at the perpetrator. I really can't see much. But this gives you an idea of what uh, what you can actually do. You can also change the speed, so uh, you can fast forward or you can slow down. So if you want things to go a little slower, we can go, how far can we go? 1 16th? 1 half? Okay, so 1 16th is the slowest you can go if you like, and you can fast forward a lot too. Uh, there might be a different uh, playback method. I guess you could go through events and stuff like that, but that depends on if your motion detecting is actually any good, so, you know. Now, we can also record things. So if you come down here and you find a clip that you want, grab our camera, pick a point, we'll add our first uh, cut, and then uh, we'll let it play out. I guess we'll play in real time. And then we go, okay, that's cool. And we'll save. Now, depending on which model you have, you're going to want to double check and make sure that the uh, your file type will actually play back on your computer. Uh, if it supports it, MP4 is probably the best. AVI is only good for Windows, and H.264 I couldn't even get to work, so... You can plug in a USB drive. Select a folder, and you can click OK, and it'll export it. And there you go. Cool. So now we got our stuff saved. That's just a real quick general overview of uh, what the software looks like. Alright, so I want to show some overlay clips real quick. Uh, right here we have the 720p metal camera over top of the 1080p plastic camera. The, these are about actual size. So even though the 1080p is wider, since it's got more resolution, you still get about the same amount of information, just over a wider field of view. Too bad the plastic one looks absolutely terrible. Okay, so next up, now we have the 720p metal on top of the 1080p metal one, so this is the better of the 1080p's. You can still see the same difference in the, uh, the field of view and all that, just a lot less noise. So now let's play some actual clips so you can get an idea of what it looks like when it's playing back. Now it's a lot more noticeable. But just in case, let's really drive this home. Let's get in there. Look at that. Just look at that. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this passes as a security system. Ugh. That is terrible. Noise everywhere. So yeah, 1080p is definitely the way to go. Even though it's wider, you still get the same amount of information. And maybe slightly even better. Now on to some clips. So we're going to start off with the 720p camera, the old system that we have. Now uh, keep in mind that the back over there is lit up, so it actually doesn't look half bad. So let's zoom in and get a better look at it. You can see the subject quite well, but if you look you can see quite a lot of uh, snow in the, um, the shadows. Now watch when he walks through the shadow how bad it gets. It just kind of disappears into nothing. So lighting is extremely important here. So keep that in mind throughout all this is how everything is lit. So now let's move on to uh, our 1080p system. Uh, and I also have this zoomed in so you can see. And you can see a little bit because my flashlight's on, but when I turn that off, everything disappears. Absolutely nothing. So again, lighting is extremely critical to uh, actually filming your subject. And as I walk forward, you'll see I'll slowly come into light, but it's pretty bad. So here's the full shot right here. You can get an idea of uh, how wide of an angle that camera is. You can catch a lot more, but even when I'm as close as possible to the camera, you really can't see a whole lot. But that camera kind of sucks anyway. So now let's go on to uh, the better uh, 1080p, the metal cameras. So here we're going to do three different distances. The first one is from the street. 
So this is already zoomed in a little bit. You can see figures moving around if they're in bright enough light. Again, we'll zoom in even more and uh, see what you can see. It's by no means great, but you could make out their general body figure. You're never going to identify a face from this far, though. Makes you wonder how well the digital uh, NVR cameras are. That might be what I test next. Now, right there, I actually stared directly at the camera, and you couldn't see anything. Okay, so next up, we're going to do a medium distance. So you might be able to see what I look like through the, uh, the camera's uh, spotlight. So you can see when I'm outside the shadow, I don't really show up much. Don't mind the uh, Oompa Loompa going on right here. I found a spider web I damn near ran into. Just figure out where the heck it's all at. So you can see the cell phone helps light up uh, tremendously. But when I start to walk over here into the actual camera's range, I start to show up a lot better. So this, this also tells you a lot about positioning your cameras properly and making sure that your scenery is well lit. So if you're trying to catch something, <laughs> you're going to want to make sure there's plenty of light on the subject or you're not going to see crap. So when I uh, walk towards the left of the frame, you can make me out a heck of a lot better. And here's that wonderful facial shot, and then we'll freeze it here. So, let's get a little closer. Do you know this man? And finally, this is the full size of the camera. So this is getting a, a getting near as close as possible. You can make me out a heck of a lot better, but now we run into the opposite problem. Now that I'm as close as I am, the image starts to get blown out. So you can see over there, really hard to see. And then, all right, this is really good, really good, and sunlight. Super bright, blown out. Who the heck is that? and freeze. So that's about the best that you can expect to get on camera. So you think you can identify that man? I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna give you boys a little tip. When you got your camera cranked down and you want to adjust it, loosen it up before you break the little bastard. The, uh, the stem on this thing is real fragile, <laughs> so I've been using these pliers right here to uh, tighten up this lock ring over here because it's hard to turn by hand. And uh, I thought I had it loose enough that I could still move the camera around, but that was not the case. So when you're going to adjust these things, make sure that thing's real loose because <laughs> that little toothpick right there will pop right off. So, crap. <laughs> Alright, so this definitely looks like some kind of pre... Um assembled stuff it's not easily take apartable so the base actually comes off relatively easy you can just unscrew that um, the collar and that'll come off and then over here this little guy's just got a thread on it so you can unthread the little part here you can take that collar off and separate the base and if you push these wires through one at a time you pull the red one out and then pull the yellow one out you can get it out of that part just fine. So if for some reason you broke that or whatever you could get rid of that easily but the smaller part that we that I damaged it was your fault too mister this ain't gonna slide because it's so small it's gonna get caught on this little end here so this must be put together after the fact I could try and go farther and maybe take the body of the camera apart Okay, so the uh, the actual lens comes off relatively easy, so that's cool. It just unscrews, it's not even under that much pressure. And um, it kind of felt like it was sealed, yeah. There's an O-ring in here, so that's cool. And they even put one of them, uh, them dry packs in there, those little, um, whatever the heck you call them things. The uh, chiclet packs. <laughs> so that's neat. That, that would keep some of the moisture. I know one of the cameras I had was suffering from moisture issues in the morning. So, okay, well, it looks like we got two standoffs here. Let's see if we can't go a little farther. Okay, so after that, we're going to have a screw on either end of the camera body as well. So once you take those two out, you're not done yet. 
because it looks like these standoffs right here are also threaded in the bottom. So you would have to get something on there like a pair of pliers or something to unscrew them. And then you might be able to go a little farther in. All right, well, a new, a new camera is 80 bucks. And I don't feel like cutting the wires and taking the uh, other end off just yet. So we're going to try and repair our issue first off. So I've sanded the area. And we're going to try every Shade Tree Mechanic's favorite friend, JB Weld. So let's see how well this stuff actually works. I got the, uh, the JB Quick Weld right here. So this is uh, supposed to set within six minutes, where the regular stuff sets within two to four hours. All right, would you take a look at that beautiful job? No, this one. No, keep trying. That, that, that. No. No. There you go, that one. So we'll let that chooch and see uh, if it don't hold. If not, we'll, uh, we'll add some more. Okay, so I've let that uh, sit overnight and she's good now. Nice and tight. No problems. Cool. Damn it. Attempt one failed. It snapped pretty easily. And the, um, although the JB weld kind of stuck, it didn't stick really well. That's just because the coating that's on this thing. So now what I've did is I've uh, filed a bevel all the way around on that bottom piece. And I've made a little metal support thinger over here. So it's basically just a half a tube. And that should hopefully give us a little more strength inside. So if we put some stuff in there, maybe we'll have something. It would probably be a lot stronger if it was a full tube, but there's no way to get that around the wire and blah, blah, blah. We're also going to try regular JB Weld now. It's about twice as strong, but it takes a lot longer to uh, fully harden. But screw it. I guess we'll put this thing up tomorrow. In the mighty words of AVE, the bigger the gab. The bit of the jab. All right. Well, I'm gonna keep inching that wire forward um, as it dries, so hopefully the uh, wire doesn't get stuck to this stuff. Okay. So now we've got two coatings of the regular JB weld on there. So we'll see how that does. I actually brought it inside this time to harden up, and I had it sitting this way, so that way the stuff would flow downwards. So it's much smoother. Well, now I'm running into an issue. Can't get the uh, lock ring all the way on there. It doesn't fit now because of all the extension. Alright, so lesson learned. Spend the time, do the sanding. It's my least favorite thing to do. But now if you take a look at that, we got quite the angular that we can get out of this. Um, so we're looking good. Alright, so I just want to show off that uh, that the fix actually did work. The JB did work pretty well once I wrapped enough of it, of it on there. But the camera's stuck in some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of boot loop or something. The signal keeps dropping in and out. It's really obnoxious. So, pretty well dead. I don't know, I tried messing around with it and trying to see what the heck they were what the problem was, but I'm not really seeing anything. There's no burnt components or anything. I don't know. Just being dumb. Uh, something else you might not notice is like rain and mist. Like this is just a very gentle mist. That'll screw up your signal real bad. Or with uh, the infrared, it's just terrible looking. So the, the on the left is the, the camera dangling. So it actually worked fine for a little bit. And, uh, and then later it started bugging out. Hmm. I wonder if that's the camera freaking out a little bit there, or if that's just me looking at it. I'll have to see if maybe that capacitor is goofed up or something. Oh, did I unplug it? Or no? Okay, so yeah, it's it's doing the boot loop thing now. Come on, piece of crap. Yeah, so this is what the camera does now. It just turns on and off constantly. So I don't know. It's super juped. Whatever. Shame, because that's one of the good cameras too.